Constitution, and I want to do something about it. You know, I take my Amen oath seriously. That. Amen to that. Now, now on your on your website, on your website, Tisha, you said you, that you were you were a uh, uh, former military wife or a former military spouse. Mm-hmm. From a veteran, from a standpoint of that, uh, and knowing that that everybody overseas, you know, that we've got so many people everywhere. Um, is there a certain, uh, how shall we say, like a priority for you to do something or introduce some sort of legislation to uh, bring the fur- troops home? And would that be like one of the first things or one of the primary uh, first things that you would try and do when you get into when you get into office if you're elected? Absolutely, yeah. I think we need to bring our men and women home and have them fighting from here for our own country. And that's something really near and dear to my heart. I really think that a lot of the things going on, including the wars that we're in, are unconstitutional. I think it's impossible to have a war on a subject versus an actual defined enemy with a defined mission and a defined goal and a defined exit time. I think it's dangerous to the American people. And I think that our, you know, our, our veterans who have already served and our young men and women who are serving over there now deserve the best because they're giving they're giving so much for our country and you know it would be my full intention as a as a congresswoman and just as a as a person to to fight for that and be a voice for that because there's there's nothing wrong with having a strong national defense i certainly think we should have one and there's nothing wrong with you know bringing these guys home because i don't think what's going on right now is actually protecting the american people how about immigration uh, do we go back to the law and actually uh, follow the law as it's written? Or do we do with uh, like Eric Holder's doing right now? State of Alabama said the federal government is not doing its job, so we are going to enforce it. And, mm-hmm. uh, and now Eric Holder is trying to uh, – has started a federal investigation into uh, discrimination uh, – uh, or breaching federal law. What, what's your thought on that? Again, because here's another instance of a treasonous activity, if you'd ask me. So what's mm-hmm. your thought? Yeah, no, I think I do believe that states are stepping up to protect their own citizenry, and I think that's great, although I think it's very disappointing that the federal government isn't doing its job. There's nothing wrong with immigration when it's legal, but what's happening is that, and the, the truth of the matter is, there's a lot of illegal immigration, and that's very dangerous because you know that means people are coming over not just you know from Mexico; they can come from anywhere. And there are some people coming over here with malintention for our country. So I don't, you know, I, I'm kind of a strong pro- proponent of you know of building building that fence, and then at the same time streamlining the process to make it easier for people to come here legally. That's it's blatantly obvious. There's some issues in bureaucracy that are causing part of the problem for people to be able to come over here legally. Let's mm-hmm. simplify that system so that people who want to come and be an American citizen can do that. And I think you need to, you know, go you need to do two things at the same time. And at the same time our focus should really be on the economy and, you know, the welfare state and fixing our problems with that, because that's what's really driving a lot of this debate in the first place. <laughs> I tell you what, there, there is a lot of problems. Uh, and let me ask you this. One, one is you just harped on states' rights, and I, I brought up this as Alabama is, is really kind of taking the bull by the horns when it comes to uh, immigration. So do you believe in a state's right? Or let me, let, me, let me bring this up after the break. Let's go to break, and when we come back, I'm going to ask. Uh, we're going to get states' rights with, with Tisha. So don't go away, folks. We'll be right back. You're listening to Freedom Link Radio on the Orion Talk Radio Network and AM 1650. Do you hear the bell, everybody? That's the bell tolling for you, Mr. Scott Tipton. 
The bell is tolling for you, my man. The establishment is going down in a year's time. At least in the 3rd Congressional District of Colorado. We're joined tonight by Tisha Cassida. You can check her out at Cassida2012.com. She's one of the refreshing new younger faces that have been affected by the uh, founding father of the modern freedom and liberty movement, Ron Paul. And, um, you know, Tisha, Ron Paul is going to be uh, leaving here. He's not running for reelection. So it's all the more important that we get people in that have uh, this idea of um, small government, of liberty, of freedom uh, in there to be able to carry on the cause. And I find it, I find it interesting, uh, again, that you're running as an independent because of just how difficult it is. But it speaks, it speaks more to the, the honor that you have, that you won't, you're not conceding or, or giving any ground and saying, well, you know what? Well, I really need to, to say I'm a Republican or a Democrat so that I can compete on their level. You know, you're taking the high ground and saying, no, you know what? I'm not going to be associated with you scumbags. And, uh, and that's it. And, and, but you're, you're doing it right. And even as hard as it may be to fight that battle, um, I think in the end, even, even if you don't come out on top, you'll turn a bunch of heads for sure. But I'm expecting a victory. So anything short of that to me is not good. Exactly. Well, we have a great opportunity to win, you know, but it, but secondly, we're, it's really important, you know, using our campaign to be a voice and a vehicle to empower people in our district, in our state. I know we're going to talk about states' rights, and I just think that if nothing else, communities should be able to take care of each other and take care of themselves, and that goes with the whole concept of decentralization of, of the federal government and many of the fen- federal entities that are associated with that that are unsustainable. So now, in the case in the case of Alabama, right? We were talking about Alabama and how Eric Holder now is investigating Alabama for uh um the violations of federal law, yada yada yada. Okay, you know. It's like those who live in glass houses shouldn't throw stones, you know? But but this guy does and Man, I hope he swings from a tree one day. I really do. That's just my thought on it. And and to be honest with you, I I find that the redress, the opportunity for states to have uh, redress with the federal government is extremely limited. So my question to you is, Alabama comes up and says, you know what? We don't want to be a part of this republic anymore because it's just – it's impossible. We've tried. We've tried to be a member. We, we've done what we're supposed to do. We reached out for you when you weren't doing your job, federal government, and we're sick of being your bag men. We're sick of all of this, uh, all of this stuff. So you know what? We want to be the Republic of Alabama and not the state of Alabama. Would you support secession? Yeah, I think that that was kind of the intention of our founding fathers, that if if something goes really haywire at the federal level, that states are able to protect their own citizenry. You know, I think I think that makes sense. And I know I, I was just thinking as you talked about this, it sounds so extreme. Yeah, I really never envisioned, you know, getting to a point where I where my framework was that this sounds like a good idea. But I mean, so much of our of our woes are centered around, you know, not only protecting our citizens, like truly protecting our citizens, but the economy and the the danger of having, you know, an economic collapse. You know, if the, if the value of the dollar falls significantly, or if we find out from if we had a um, full audit of the Federal Reserve and found out, you know, how much debt we're really in or how much we owe and who we owe it to. And, you know, that could be really bad. And at that point, you know, it's pretty much everyone for themselves. And I think that states have a role to play in stepping up, especially when it comes to currency. You know, I'm a proponent of a state bank like North Dakota has, you know, not only is it more profitable for the citizens, but it's also kind of that hedge. And so, I can I can foresee something like that happening. It would certainly be my intention to do something great at the federal level and find like-minded people so that we can all play in the sandbox together and create a country that's, you know, 
a little bit more free and different than what we have now. But I, I can certainly see something like that happening. I think several states are close to that at any given time if you if you look at the books. <laughs> okay, let me let me let me ask you another very polarizing question. Uh, now, Ron Paul supports legalizing drugs and making uh, these crimes. Uh, you know, let all these people that are in jail for petty drug crimes let them go. What's what's your thoughts on that? I'm in complete agreement. I think that you have the right to consume whatever you like. And, you know, I believe that the drug war is a false war. Again, it's a war against something that you can never win. People who are um, apt to use drugs and become addicted to drugs are going to use those drugs if they're legal or not. I mean, that's just, it's human nature. You know, people are making, people have this thing called free will. And they use that. And there's another thing called personal responsibility, which means you have to live with the outcome of your choices. But we all deserve to make those choices for ourselves. But the fact of the matter is, you know, making it illegal just creates an underground black market for it. I say legalize it and tax it and use that money for our communities that so desperately need it. You know, and I think that a lot of people who are in prison for, you know, again, like these pet, it's considered petty crimes. I think that it's a just such an immense pull on the taxpayer. It does not make any sense to me. And I've read um, Reefer Madness by Eric Schlosser, and I just don't think the science supports that, especially something like marijuana is, you know, I just don't think the science supports that that's a dangerous drug. I, it, you have, you, at, have you seen... Have you seen the movie Reefer Madness? I have not seen the movie. I just read the book. You, you need to see the movie. Yeah, the film is much more expressive. It shows you what happens when people smoke marijuana. Oh, oh my yes. God, they go crazy. Apparently, when oh, you smoke yeah, pot, yeah, you yeah. just want to rape and pillage everything. That's right. That's right. Which is like the total anti-pot type of thing, right? Because what happens? You, you got a bunch of mellow people laying around. I bet you. I will bet you right now that we wouldn't be in half the wars right now. Because everybody'd be like, "Yeah, man, I'm easy like." It wouldn't be in any wars. Happen. Everybody'd be too high to be fighting. <laughs> <laughs> and I mean, I don't, I don't advocate a world of dope heads or anything like that. But at the same time, you know, you're right, Tisha. You should be free to do whatever you want to do to your own body. Your body is your property, and right. and you know, a, a lot of the, a lot of the freedoms that we have in this country, or at least was envisioned by our founding fathers, were derived from property. So mm -hmm. exactly. to, to take that away from people, I mean, you're, you're taking away their God-given rights. And, and really, it's only God himself that can take it away. And that's why I always say that, you know, God gave us all free will. And mm -hmm. regardless of how much they turn the screws on us, you know, uh, that the IRS will come knocking at your door and they'll try and take all your stuff away. They'll throw you in prison. You still don't have to consent and consent silence folks is consent in the eyes of the law so it's our duty it's our duty as human beings who live in the united states of america and the world in general and stand up and say no we do not comply we don't we don't want this we're not going to be complicit we're not going to comply and you know what i'm not afraid i'm not scared Right. And that's that's something that – that's the spirit that I envision that I want in a candidate that runs for office. And you know, to have that fire in them and not just get there and then get consumed by the, 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 the muck and the nastiness and the bleh, – that's Washington, you know? <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> yeah, exactly. Well, it's very important. It's, it's so important to – refresh you know our congress and senate and the executive branch and i won't even go into the judicial branch we have some serious problems and it's going to take tenacity it's going to take you know time it's going to take people willing to you know give a lot of their a lot of their of their life you know for for the cause and we need to do it we don't have a lot of time <laughs> well folks We'll be heading to the last segment where two hours go fast.
as uh, as bright. And I'll tell you, 